Puss in Boots Once upon a time there were three brothers named David, John and Bruce, who were the sons of a poor miller. The miller did not have much to leave his sons, and when he passed away, all that was left to divide between them was the mill, a donkey and a cat. The meal was left to his elder son, David. The middle son, John, inherited the donkey, and Bruce, the youngest, ended up with a cat. What good is a cat? cried Bruce. I can't even afford to feed the poor animal. Much to Bruce's surprise, the cat began to speak. Dear sir, you have nothing to worry about the cat assured him. All I require is a sack and a pair of boots made specially for me. Soon you will see, you have received the best inheritance of all. You're not as unlucky as you think you are. Bruce wasn't quite sure what to make of this, but he thought that since it was odd enough that the cat could speak, Perhaps the cat would also be true to his word. He quickly fashioned a pair of boots in the cat's size and found a sack. Seeing the cat jump to his feet, Bruce laughed and decided to call him Puss in Boots. Puss strutted away confidently into the woods. He had a plan. He gathered some carrots from a garden and put them in his sack. He then hid behind the trunk of a tree and waited for a rabbit to find his trap. Soon Puss in Boots was rewarded for waiting. He leaped out from his hiding spot and closed the bag on his catch. Puss was very pleased with himself and moved happily on to the second step of his plan. His next stop was the castle, and so he ran excitedly out of the woods and over the bridge toward it. When he arrived at the castle, he asked to speak to the king, and was soon taken to, taken to see him. The king's daughter, the princess, was sitting next to him. Your Majesty, said Puss in Boots. I have been sent by the Marquis of Carabas to deliver you this gift, a plump rabbit for you to eat. Please tell the Marquis that his gifts have been well received, said the surprised king. At these words, the cat bowed and left the castle. The next day, Puss in Boots returned to the castle with a tray of fresh fish. Then, on each of the following days, he returned with a partridge, a plump rabbit, and some other treat. Soon the king and the princess announced that they would like to meet the mysterious Marquis. Hearing this news, Bruce was scared that the king would discover that he was not a Marquis and lived in a miserable cottage. But Puss in Boots had a plan. I'll take care of everything, Puss in Boots cried. Take off your clothes and jump in the river. Moments after Bruce jumped in the river, the king's carriage appeared on the road. Help us, your majesty, my master, the Marquis of Carabas, needs help, cried Puss in Boots. His clothing has been stolen by thieves. The king made his carriage stop and he made his coachman rescue the poor Marquis. My friend, cried the king, please accept our invitation to the castle to dry off. I will give you new clothing and all of this will soon be nothing more than a bad memory. I accept with pleasure, called Bruce as he was pulled from the water. At the castle, the cunning cat tried to save time. He confided to the king that his master had been very upset by this incident. 
Will you please stay with him for a while, said Puss in Boots daringly, just until he comes to his senses. For my part, I will go ahead and make sure everything is in order when we receive you. The king agreed, which made his daughter very happy. She found that she quite liked the Marquise. Bruce was looking quite splendid, as the clothing that the king had given him suited him to perfection. He had never been so well dressed. Bruce could barely contain his excitement. Meanwhile, Puss in Boots ran ahead, readying the third step of his clever plan. He threatened all of the countly folk he met with horrible things, and he ordered them to say that this land belonged to none other than the Marquis of Carabas if they were asked. A little while long later, the king, the princess, and the false marquise returned to the road. Along the way, the king began to question the farmers who were working in the fields. Tell me, my brave fellows, he called out, to whom does this large and well-maintained land belong to? Your Majesty, they are the lands of the Marquis of Carabas, our much-loved master, the farmers shouted in unison. A little further down the road, Puss in Boots arrived before a castle that belonged to an ogre. He knocked on the door and heard a growl in response. I am one of your greatest admirers. The cat called out. I have heard that you are capable of doing many wonderful things. Flattered by these words, the ogre opened the door and invited the cat inside. For the occasion, the ogre brought out a normal-sized tea set for the cat. I know, for example, continued the cat, that you can change into very large animals. Yes, that's right, the ogre grumbled. That seems too far-fetched to be true, replied the cat. To prove that he could, in a flash, the ogre transformed into a huge, ferocious lion. What a big, scary lion you can be, said Puss. But I bet you can turn into anything as small as a mouse. Cheeky little cat, thought the ogre. I'll show him. In the blink of an eye, the ogre changed into a tiny, tiny field mouse. Before he had a chance to realize he had been tricked, Puss snatched the little mouse and gobbled him up. And that was the end of the ogre. Moments later, the royal carriage came to a stop outside the ogre's castle door. Puss quickly ran all over the castle, tidying up all of the rooms, before, before he went to open the door. Welcome, your majesty, to the grand castle of the Marquis of Carabas, greeted Puss as he bowed before the king. The ogre's kitchen was filled with all sorts of delicious food, and so the king, the princess, and Bruce sat down to eat a lavish feast. My dear Marquis, said the king, you are such a fine man with plenty of land and magnificent castle. Have you a wife? Your Majesty, I have never found love until this day, said Bruce, smiling at the princess. With that, the king proposed that the Marquis of Carabas and the princess be wed. Both Bruce and the princess were thrilled. They had liked each other from the very moment they first met. It wasn't long before Bruce, as he, had, he was now known, the Marquis of Carabas, and the princess were happily married and living in the ogre's castle. You see, Bruce, said Puss one day, 
I told you I was worth more the, than the meal or the donkey. The end. Sweet dreams and good night.